Hola, ¿qué tal? Tenemos la visita del profesor David Skopek. Él eh, vive en Berlín y estudió su licenciatura en Schwabische Gemund, en Ulm, que es un poco la, la consecuencia de la Universidad de Ulm. Y ha sido profesor en Zurich y ahora es profesor en la Universidad de Berlín y su especialidad es en diseño de información. Entonces vamos a tener una, una conversación con él. David, it's very nice to have you here. Thank you yeah. for having me here. Yes, um, we were talking about all your experiences in information design. Can you talk us a little bit, uh, tell us a little bit about the topics that you usually work on in your studio? Well, in our studio we have uh, different fields uh, where we work in and um, um, we do a lot of um, projects and for education purposes like school books for example. We do um, wayfinding systems for architects and um, we do a lot of visualization for scientific institutes. So these are our most, um, uh, are the biggest fields that we work in in, in the areas of information design. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about the scientific projects that you are working for this institute? Yes, we recently finished a, a very big project that is uh, called Simon. It's the social indicators monitor. Uh, we were working on this for many years, I think almost five or six years. And it's, um, I would say it's an, it's, uh, an interface or an access software to, to a very large database of social data all from all over Europe and also from the United States, Japan and some other countries. Mm -hmm. And this software is web-based and it allows you to, to um, get visual access through to data that you are looking for. And if you find out some interesting points there, then you can go into the database and extract the data, export the data and work or continue working with them. Mm -hmm. What kind of team uh, worked in that project? Um, we have designers who are, I, would, I, I should say, really interested in, in, in working with complex material. Um, they are mm, trained in, in dealing with um, uh, visualization methods, with um, all these uh, different methods around the topic of transformation. And we have software developers who work together with them, and they, um, yeah, they sh work in a team every day, and very close to each other. Mm -hmm. What is the the audience or the people, the users, who are uh, interacting with this kind of information? Uh, Simon is made for um, editors from newspapers, for example, for journalists. Um, um, it's made for, for teachers at schools, uh, it's made for um, students who are looking for um, information, but it's also made for, um, yeah, I would say interested citizens who want to know what's going on in, in, in the world and how our welfare system develops over the last decades. <laughs> uh, can you tell us a little bit about the projects in education? It's only school books or what else do you work on? No, it's mainly school books. We have some big um, publishing houses that, um, that work with us and we started to work for them I think five or ten years ago. Um, and we develop different formats for school, school books like for primary schools and secondary schools. And um, yeah. It's basically, um, we are mostly in the fields of natural, how do you say, natural science or, or um, mathematics, biology, physics. So where you need a lot of, you have a, a large part that requires to be uh, visualized uh, in diagrams and formulas and so on. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of the reasons why they have selected us. What are the main abilities that uh, the, uh, your, your team applies in these projects, in education? Um, <laughs> I, I think, actually I should say um, that 
the ability to to look as at this kind of products from a child point of view because um, we always tend to 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 develop this kind of projects from an adult point of view but of course um, you have to change the perspective and uh, I'm not working in this project but I see my colleagues and I always see the projects on their table and uh, they are discussing a lot if children do understand what they try to explain them or not so I think this is really the most important point but also to to have this kind of ability to go in deep into content to work with complex material and to find a way and to yeah, to be interested in, 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 in finding new ways of expression. Mm -hmm. When you talk about complex material, what do you mean by that? Um, I would say complex material in general is that you have something that is um, difficult to overlook in the first moment. So you have for example, a large amount of data, you have a large amount of text, you have a difficult situation in a spatial context, you have um, large databases and so on. And um, then I think it's important to have an idea how you can approach this different material. So how you can bring order into it, how you can structure it, how you can um, find ways how you can manage it mm -hmm. and um, this obviously doesn't have so much to do with with graphic design uh, in the first moment but for for our designers it's it's one of the important first steps that they try to deal with the content and that they find a way how they can manage it this point of view of uh, looking from a child point of view or from the user's point of view is very important in your work for instance, when you work in wayfinding, and for instance, the project that you worked two years ago here with our students, you you had the students go after uh, an one person or another and then feel the environment. How do you do it in your wayfinding projects? Um, yes, in a wayfinding project, um, we have in most cases the problem that uh, we start working before the building exists in reality. So we have to work with the maps and the plans that are made by the architects and we have to understand how they describe what might be going on there in the, in the, in the building and um, how they um, have an idea how people might experience this building. So um, a lot of work happens in during that period, just um, getting an idea, getting an imagination of what's, what might happen. And sometimes we have models like uh, 3D uh, rendered models or even real models that help us to understand um, how visitors of the building might experience, uh, perceive the building. Yes, and this is how we slowly, step by step, uh, develop this idea of what might go on there. A very uh, difficult question. Well, you have visited Mexico several times. And uh, do you think that we could work on a project like maybe just limiting a part of the city and say, well, let's look for a signage system that is appropriate? Do you think that would be uh, possible? Oh, I would say, actually, I le yesterday I saw something new here, uh, the new signage system that is used for the metro bus, for example. Mm -hmm. And I think this is a very good example of how you, how you include uh, a new way of orientation into an existing environment. And um, I think that today there are many experts who, who know how to deal with such problems. And um, yeah, it should work. That would be, that could be a project in our master's uh, program. Um, what I saw yesterday from a metro bus, for example, I, I the, the examples have been very good. But um, I think continuing like this, that you have some new developments in the city, and that might might require a new way of understanding and and orientation. Of course, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to ask you about the intercultural work that you did. Uh, trying to find out 
the different pictograms, pictograms among cultures and how they worked. Could you tell us a little bit about the results and the process that you took uh, into that? Uh? Well, the starting point was very simple. Um, we, we look back in information design in a very Eurocentric uh, tradition. So many things that have been developed in this field um, are, are, are developed in, from a point of view that um, was done by Europeans or, or Western cultures. So, and many things we always think that we know how they work, but we are not sure how they work. So we wanted to see how other cultures look at the same problems. And um, so one very simple topic was um, how, how different kinds of pictograms are perceived by different cultures. And if it makes sense that there is a, a standardized pictogram that is used all over the world, or if there is a kind of need, a cultural need, uh, um, in, in culturally uh, specified um, pictograms. So we made this um, evaluation and we had um, uh, more than 1,000 participants in this uh, poll. And the from where? From all over the world, from, from Oceania, Oceania from, from China, from, from Mexico, from the United States, from all over the world. And um, finally we found out that uh, people from other cultures uh, really um, would appreciate if there were a kind of uh, culturally differentiated system in pictograms. And um, well, this is one of the results of a, of a, s of a first step in, a, in, in making research in this field. And we will go on with that hopefully in the next years and see what, what, how, how we can make it more precise. It was through technology that you could communicate in in these ways and get the evaluation from all over the world, eh? wasn't it? Yes, but we made two tests. One was uh, an, a test that was made, um, was, that was web-based, and then we found out that, it's, that it's, it's easy to get access to many people, but we also wanted to have the opinion from the people from the street. So we also asked some colleagues and friends to help us in, in their hometowns and they sent out students and they made questionnaires on the street with people who don't have access to, to web-based technology. And it was very interesting to see um, um, yeah, how similar or how different the, those uh, um, responses have been. But in general, um, we were surprised that, that um, there was a kind of a very strong tendency um, that um, uh, was kind of equal in from both tests. Oh, good. Could you tell us a little bit about your experience working with students? Yes, um, I always worked in, in, in institutions that um, offered various fields in graphic design. So, so like the traditional ones that we have, poster design and and illustration and um, advertising and it was um, for me it was always very helpful to have a clear outline what this field of information design or visual system means and um, it was also very helpful to have a clear framework where I can work with my students so for example that um, they know what they can expect from me they know what kind of classes I give, what kind of projects we were work on, and that they know in what environment they can work, so that they have their classroom and their computers there, and they can join in groups and, and, and train um, to work together. This is what we expect from, as from professionals um, in, in, in this educational context. And um, in both cases, we have been teaching the last years in Zurich and in Berlin. Um, um, it was very helpful to have a clear concept for, for, for this field and um, um, yeah, we are still working together with the students to keep on developing the curriculum and um, yeah, the future development. Yeah, do you have a, a particular infrastructure, a particular kind of space that uh, 
you think that uh, now that we have our master's program with uh, three areas involved, that it would be better for them? Yeah, we always have classrooms that are dedicated to, to our chair or to our institute um, and or to my institute. And um, uh, so students have their space where they can leave all their belongings and um, where they can meet every day. And I think this is something very interesting that we have this tendency that students in the last 10 years or last 15 years started to work at home because it was quite easy to have your own laptop at home and and you have um, yeah the time that you need to at work at night for example what many of them do and in the last in the last years we see this development that um, that they understand how important it is to work together in groups that they have this kind of communication that they learn from each other so we are really taking care of um, yeah, giving them the right um, um, amount of attention and the space where they can feel comfortable in working in teams. Now that you know a little bit about our master's, master's program that will start in next September, uh, what do you think about this mixture between communication strategies and information technology and design altogether? Um, I think that there's, o there's always ha has been a very strong connection between design and technology. Design always was somehow like the like the twin um, in the in this uh, in this constellation of technology of digital media, for example. And communication, I think, gives the chance that we get uh, a more um, um, more scientific-based understanding, um, evidence-based understanding of what's going on in the background. Designers always tend to, um, not always, but in many cases, they tend to, to um, have a very subjective point of view of what they do and uh, how it might work and uh, how, how the audience might understand it. And I think communication gives the chance to, to get a more objective point of view. Like um, because I, as I understand communication, they they provide more research-based methods um, and um, in their evaluations. And uh, yeah, I think that should be a very fruitful, helpful connection. Do you think that uh, this mixture will have an impact in uh, Mexico, in uh, perhaps a specific problems such as? Well, maybe a visualization of information and communication about economic issues or social issues or political issues. Uh, what do you think? Uh, do you think that um, our graduates will find something interesting ahead of them? Yes, in terms of um, learning new methods, um, research-based methods, I think that this program will give them um, big uh, chances to, to find out how they can solve problems. Um, I think this, is, this will be the major difference to a regular curriculum in the field of graphic design. And um, I don't know, I, I wouldn't say that it will be an impact, especially in Mexico. I would say this would be an impact all over the world because we are in the beginning of this uh, new um, connections. So um, I would say that um, this kind of curriculum, in, from my point of view, should be something very innovative here. And um, that uh, it definitely will give you good chances to develop this a very, very specific program in the field of information design. Mm -hmm. Good. So has, uh, has it been difficult for the students to, uh, in China to understand about information design? No, actually I was surprised how, how, it easy, how, how easy it was for them to, to translate the idea of information design to what they, how design could help solve problems in their society. And um, I was surprised that um, without having the tradition that we have in Europe or in Western countries, 
they immediately understood that um, with information design they have a very powerful tool um, yeah, to, to create something uh, like a common understanding what's going on and how this large, huge amount of people can be informed or organized by visual communication. Mm -hmm. I, I understand that uh, many teachers have from Europe and maybe from the US have been invited to teach in China. Uh, do you think that um, uh, they will be transformed into a, a power, in a design power in China? I think there are already, but not because of the foreign guests, but because of their own students. I remember my first Chinese student um, we had in Berlin in 90, 1993, and now he is the director of uh, the most important design school in, in Beijing. So they always send a lot of good students to Europe and to other countries, to the US and mm -hmm. to Japan. And, um, uh, and, and they are all going back to China and they, create, they, they develop schools, they develop programs. And um, well, in the end, um, they are having their own standards, of course. And uh, have they uh, uh, created their own processes, their own uh, uh, way of uh, expressing themselves? How, how has this worked? Uh, have the teachers been an influence or, or really just, uh, you know, knowing what is happening in Europe? I think this is something that happens now, that they have their own generation of very talented designers. Um, in the former years, it was more like that they were adapting to existing concepts and um, for for our colleagues in China, this is not um, not a matter of copying it. It is more, more that they are doing this in respect of what they experience and that they say, well, if this is so good, then we also have to do it in that way. But this is changing now. I think it's, this is just a matter of time. Um, and then they will create their own ways, their own curriculums. And uh, I think in some countries that are a little bit more ahead, like South Korea, for example, you can see that they are already working with very high standards. Or uh, I've been in Hong Kong recently, and um, I was really surprised how, how high the standards there are. Mm -hmm. I'm asking this because many years ago, we were looking at the design basics, and uh, we invited some Japanese. Uh, teachers who were working in, in, in Tokyo and um, and we organized this seminar just to talk about design basics and after maybe two or three hours we found out that they are using all the Bauhaus basics in their classes mm -hmm. so I was just trying to make some connections if something similar was happening in China or not. Yeah but I think that you can find this in almost every field, that there are some, some basics in, in, in education or in, in, in working that uh, are very difficult to reinvent. Uh, we had these discussions about how useful it is to, to start with this old traditionally basics and, and then there were some new concepts and now we are doing again the old ones and um, I think this is not a matter of, um, of a cultural specified understanding of teaching. It's more that, okay, what, what, what we are, are we working on? What are our tools? What are the methods? And, and how do we understand visual communication? And uh, I think in the end, uh, beside of this cultural questions, our cognition all over the world is almost the same, so. David. Could you tell us a little bit more of how the scientific project, the Simon project, started? What was a, how was the problem presented to you as a design studio? Mm -hmm. I think it was a very 
common problem that um, scientific institutions have to face, look at today. The point was that they have a huge collection of data that was kept and distributed in, in, in catalogs and data sheets. And once this ki these databases became larger and larger, it became more difficult to, to uh, provide them to their audience. So um, they said, well, we have this, this um, database here and, and we don't know what to do with it because it's becoming more and more difficult to uh, um, give access to it. And, um, and there's a difference giving access to this kind of data. One, ac one way is that you just um, have this kind of database and it allows you to search for specific data there. But uh, the idea was that the access should um, be given in a, in a visual way. So before knowing the exact data, you should get the chance um, to see what's going on in the development. And if there's something interesting, you go deeper into it. So this was the starting point when we said, well, it, it doesn't make sense to, to provide another web-based uh, data access uh, retrieval software that, that uh, delivers you timelines and timelines with data. But we proposed um, that the system should have a visual interface that helps first to understand what's going on and then go deeper into this topic. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what do people do with the data that uh, you have already presented in a visual way? Uh, what kind of um, uh, relationship people can establish from the data that you have put into this program? Um, this is a very, very difficult point because the intention of the scientists is not that people should have a um, somehow intended understanding of the data. They want to provide them on a very, very neutral way. So in the end, it depends on you, how you um, perceive the data and how you um, combine different aspects of our social living. For example? For example, a very good example is migration um, in Germany. We have this uh, discussion that too many foreigners might disturb our, our, our social system. But if you look at the data, you can see that um, the amount of, um, of foreigners that are coming, immigrants that are coming to Germany are compensating the, uh, uh, the number of, of uh, German citizens. So in the end, they are helping us to keep the, our social standards and they are not uh, uh, a problem for our society. And this you can see in this data, but it depends how you combine them. Mm -hmm. For example, can you find out uh, from which place they are coming from, these uh, migrants? Um, not in this system, not in the system. It's, it says only how many immigrants there are in different countries all over Europe, but not where they're coming from. Uh -huh. But you can tell the, their ages, for, for example, or their education background, no. or what kind of information you can get? You can get how the, the number of immigrants develops over years, and you can observe it from the late 50s. So this is, this is the big advantage of the system, that it gives you an overview over, over many years and it allows you to understand what's going on in the society. It's not, not going too deep into specific data, but um, I should say that um, in Simon we have 1.5 million single data stored, so it's already a very large system. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can cross, I'm, I'm going back to the same question, mm -hmm. sorry, but can you cross uh, immigration with economics, for instance? Yes, you can. And you can do nonsense if you like with the system. As, <laughs> yeah. Such as what? <laughs> yeah, you can, you can build up correlations that do not make sense. Um, uh, and, but in the end, it depends on you. 
we always thought about that we should have some regulation systems there, but scientists say no, no, this is not our job. In the end, it's the job of the people who are ret retrieving, searching for information, and they have to see if there is some kind of connection between the data. So can we say that this uh, project is uh, a way how information design and technology and communication are put together uh, in order to generate knowledge? Yes, and together with the scientists, the sociologists mm -hmm. who are behind the data, who are uh, collecting them, who, who are connecting different systems all over Europe. Uh, and um, together with them, it's really generating new knowledge and on different levels for different audiences. For political decisions, for instance? For example, yes. Simon for social decisions? Yes, yes definitely. This is, this is, uh, Simon is a database or it's, a, it's, it, it's published for decision making. This is like the big picture over, over the idea of Simon. Do you know of uh, decision makers who have used the no. data? No, we, we have a system that allows us to track how many people access to, to, to Simon, but not where they're coming from, what are they interested in. There are very strict regulations um, uh, on how um, data can be kept and um, traced. So we know how many um, and, f and from what countries they are coming from, but not no more details. Okay, thank you. Uh, you have been teaching in China for some time. Uh, well, at least a couple of times you were there. Three times, Three yes. times. What was your experience in China? You were teaching undergraduate level or graduate undergraduate. level? Uh, undergraduate level in the BA. Mm -hmm. My experience in China, my first experience is that they have very large classes. So very large, what do you mean by 150 that? students in, one, work yeah, in one, one workshop and um, um, it's, it's really a challenge to, to organize a project in, in with such a large group. Um, they are very hard workers. They know that, the students know that if they get a chance to study at the university that, that, that this is the chance of, of their life. So um, I remember all workshops that um, they have been working on day and night and they nev never let you sleep at night because when they finished with something, when they came up with some results, they were knocking at your door and they wanted to have your comments. And um, this is, it sounds funny, but it's, um, but I think it's a clear, it's characterizing What's how, how work, how design is understood there. It's something that keeps the people moving and they want to change things and they want to create new things. And um, I would say in all projects, um, I was surprised um, how, how clear they understood the idea of information design. Thank you very much, David. Uh, you have been coming to Mexico for the last 16 years or so, so you know a little bit about our culture and about our way of doing things. And, and we are happy to hear that you see this new experiment, that it's much more than an experiment, but anyway, that this master's program is, is kind of interesting. Do you want to add something else before we, we leave? No, I think... Um, I'm very excited about your new program. Um, I'm very happy to hear that um, that now also in the EFE there's a, this a chance to to go deeper to focus in this topic. Um, I was always uh, uh, very happy to see and to hear if um, when when students are interested in this field. So I'm looking forward to see what's going on here, and uh, I wish you all the best. Well, you're invited to, to see the first results. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you very Muchas much. gracias a todos.